Hello and welcome to the How to Pass the Colorado's Driver Test Podcast. I'm Theodore Reynolds from Mindtree Exponential. At Mindtree X, we look for ways to enrich content to improve its ability to help students learn. Reading text is a lot like trying to eat a pile of raw vegetables. Enriching the text, say, by turning it into audio content, throwing in some music and adding a few sound effects, and bam, you got yourself some tasty ice cream. Well, at least, tasty ice cream for your brain. For now, here's a small cone of ice cream learning to help you pass the Colorado driver test. This is an enriched audio production of the official Colorado Driver Handbook. To get a free copy of the PDF of the Colorado Driver Handbook and some other free toppings for your ice cream, please visit howtopassthecoloradodrivertest.com. Enjoy. <laughs> 12. Sharing the Road Sharing the road means getting along, not ahead. A courteous, alert, and knowledgeable driver will make the highways safer for all. Bicycles, motorcycles, buses, trucks, and truck tractors each have unique operating characteristics. Let's share the road safely with trucks and buses. 12.1 Large Trucks and Buses Due to their size and weight, large trucks and buses present unique problems to motorists who share the highway with them. A loaded truck with good tires and properly adjusted brakes traveling at 55 miles per hour on a clear, dry roadway requires a minimum of 290 feet to come to a complete stop. Trucks and buses require more room than automobiles to execute turns, make lane changes, and other driving maneuvers. Trucks and buses have blind spots, which are called no zones. No zones are the areas around trucks and buses where cars either disappear into blind spots or are so close that they restrict the truck or bus driver's ability to stop or maneuver safely. Both types of no zones greatly increase the potential for a crash. Know the no zones. Point to remember. Backing up. Do not pass or stop close to a truck or bus that is preparing to or is backing up, as the trailer will hide objects in the no zone. Passing. Maintain a constant speed when passing and re-entering the lane in front of trucks or buses since they require longer distances to slow down than cars. Do not pull in front of a truck or bus until you can see the entire front of the vehicle. Rear Blind Spots Trucks and buses have large blind spots behind them. If you tailgate, not only do you make it impossible for the driver to see you, but you also cut off your own view of traffic. Side Blind Spots Trucks and buses have much larger blind spots on both sides than cars. If the truck or bus driver needs to make an emergency maneuver or change lanes, they will not be able to see you and a collision could result. Wide turns. Because of their size, trucks and buses often need to move to the left lane to make right turns. Cutting in between the truck or bus and the curb or shoulder 
increases the possibility of a crash. Do not go into the no zone. Runaway truck ramp. Occasionally, trucks and buses lose their ability to break in order to prevent serious accidents from occurring due to out of control vehicles. Runaway truck ramps have been built. Never park on the ramp or even in the entrance. Not only is this illegal, it is inviting disaster. You may be depriving a truck or bus driver of the chance to survive by denying him or her access to the runaway ramp. One indication of a runaway truck or bus is smoke coming from the brakes. Get out of the way and or do not get in front of the truck or bus. Bus related issues. Buses make frequent stops. Avoid being caught behind the bus by making safe lane changes. If you are passing a stopped bus, use care as the bus may start to move out into your lane of traffic. Remember, the bigger the truck or bus, the bigger the blind spots, the more room they need to maneuver, the longer it takes them to stop, the longer it takes them to accelerate, the longer it takes to pass them, the more likely you're going to be the loser in a collision. 12.2 Railroad Crossings When approaching a railroad crossing, be cautious because a train can arrive at any time, day or night. Obey all warning devices, lights, gates and signs. Do not drive onto a crossing until you are sure the tracks are clear, especially when there are multiple tracks. There may be a second train. Do not misjudge the train's speed and distance. Because of its large size, a train appears to be moving much slower than you think. The average freight train traveling at 55 miles per hour requires approximately one mile to stop. Trains cannot stop. You can. Warning Devices Advanced Warning Signs A railroad crossing is ahead. The warning sign is located at a sufficient distance to allow you to stop, if necessary, before reaching the crossing. Pavement Marker Consists of an RXR and a stop line and may be painted on the pavement in front of a crossing. Always stay behind the painted stop line while waiting for a passing train. Cross Buck Signs These signs should be treated the same as a yield sign. If there is more than one track, a sign below the cross buck indicates the number of tracks at this crossing. Flashing light signals. Always stop when the lights begin to flash. Do not attempt to cross until the lights have stopped flashing. Gates. Gates are used with flashing light signals at certain crossings. Do not cross until the gates are raised and the lights have stopped flashing. 12.3 light rail. The Regional Transportation District, RTD, has added light rail transit, LRT, to its bus fleet in the Denver metropolitan area. Light rail vehicles, LVRs, are six-axle, articulated, 
bi-directional rail vehicles powered by 750 volts DC from an overhead cantonary wire. Clean, quiet, and reliable, light rail is safe, proven technology, but it requires additional attention from pedestrians and motorists. In some areas, LRVs will operate on streets in the same way as other motor vehicles and will have the same rights and responsibilities as other motorists. In other areas, such as on Stout and California streets in downtown Denver, LRVs will operate in the opposite direction from other traffic. The LRVs will be governed by all traffic signals and signs when operating on the streets. Pedestrian safety tips. LRVs are very quiet, so when approaching a light rail line stop, look and listen in both directions, even on one-way streets. Do not step on the rails as they can be very slippery. Never climb between two LRVs that are hooked together. Driver safety tips. Each light rail car can weigh up to 40 tons and therefore cannot stop quickly. Remember these important tips while driving in a light rail area. Never turn in front of an approaching LRV. Never turn across a set of light rail tracks without checking in all directions. Watch for people getting on and off a stopped LRV. Be especially alert in light rail areas as nearby buildings and foliage can make it difficult for motorists to see them. The light rail crossing areas for motorists can have regular traffic lights. Some have warning lights and some have gates with railroad type traffic arms. All these signs mean the same thing. Stop! Do not cross the tracks! Never drive around traffic gates. Even if an LRV has just passed, another vehicle may be coming from the other direction. Be aware of your vehicle height. Overhead wires are a standard height of 18 feet 6 inches above the center of the tracks. Always assume a wire hanging from the overhead cantonary is hot, electrified, so never touch the wire or anything it is in contact with. If you find a wire hanging from the overhead, or if you think any safety devices are malfunctioning, please call RTD and report the situation. Twelve point four bicycles and motorcycles. Motorists must be on the lookout for cyclists and anticipate sudden and unexpected moves from them. A share the road attitude is the best policy to promote safe highways in Colorado. The most common motorist caused car bicycle or car motorcycle collision is a motorist turning left in front of an oncoming bicycle or motorcycle. Drivers may fail to see cyclists, or a driver may fail to judge the speed of an oncoming cyclist. As a driver, remember to look for cyclists at the right side of the lane or on the shoulder, and then look again. Make sure you see the cyclist and know their speed before you make a left turn. Bicycles 
travel in the same direction as motor vehicles and are entitled to the full lane when traveling at the normal speed of traffic. However, they are generally moving more slowly and will usually travel to the right of the right lane or on the shoulder or bike lane. Exceptions include making left turns or when a right turn lane is present and the cyclist is traveling straight through. Motorcycles are entitled to the same full lane width as other vehicles. Motorcyclists constantly change position within their lane so they can see and be seen and avoid road hazards. Never move into the same lane with a motorcycle, even if the motorcycle is traveling to one side of the lane. Also, be aware that strong winds can unexpectedly move a motorcycle out of its lane. Bicycles and motorcycles are smaller, harder to see, and can move faster and stop faster than expected. Their control is more easily hampered by road defects and debris. You should watch for bicycles and motorcycles, use extra caution when driving around either, and increase your following distance. 12.5 Careless and Reckless Driving Sharing the road is important, not only for your safety and the safety of others, it is the law. 42-4-1401 Reckless Driving Any person who drives any motor vehicle, bicycle, or motorized bicycle in such a manner as to indicate either a wanton or willful disregard for the safety of persons or property is guilty of reckless driving. 42-4-1402 Careless Driving Any person who drives any motor vehicle, bicycle, or motorized bicycle in careless and imprudent manner without due regard for the width, grade, curves, corners, traffic, and use of the streets and highways and all other attendant circumstances is guilty of careless driving. 12.6 Aggressive Driving Aggressive driving or reckless driving is defined as any behind-the-wheel behavior that places another person or people and or property in danger through willful action without regard to safety. Aggressive versus reckless. Driving assertively to enter a freeway or changing lanes to protect yourself from another motorist encroaching on your lane is acceptable. But at what point does assertive driving become aggressive or reckless? The line is defined by your intent as a motorist. If a law enforcement officer notes your actions as endangering another person or property, including the other motorist's vehicle, you can be charged under Colorado's reckless driving statute and, if convicted, up to eight points can be assessed against your driving record. A single act, such as tailgating another driver, passing on the shoulder, or running a red light could be seen by a law enforcement officer as aggressive if the officer believes the action is willful and places others in danger. A combination of acts, such as speeding, cutting off other vehicles, swerving toward another motorist, honking, flashing headlights, yelling, and using inappropriate hand gestures can also be considered aggressive driving. Some acts, 
such as waving a weapon at another motorist, bumping or ramming another vehicle, or high-speed pursuit of a vehicle can result in criminal charges beyond a reckless driving charge. Protecting yourself from aggressive drivers. To protect yourself from an aggressive driver, do not engage with that driver. Don't attempt to match his or her aggressive act. Avoid eye contact. Even if you've unintentionally made a mistake that made the other driver angry, back off. Give way to the other driver and let the aggressive driver go. A few seconds engaged with an aggressive driver could change your life or the lives of the loved ones riding with you forever. Reporting aggressive drivers. Dial star CSP to report aggressive drivers. The Colorado State Patrol has set aside a special cellular telephone number for motorists and bicyclists to use in reporting aggressive drivers. The call will be handled by the state patrol trooper closest to the caller, or will be referred to a participating local law enforcement agency. There is no charge for the call. Could I become an aggressive driver? Anyone is capable of becoming an aggressive driver. Some drivers may be more likely to become aggressive. Here is a series of questions developed by Leon James, Ph.D., to determine whether you have a greater potential to become aggressive behind the wheel. Take a few minutes to ask yourself these questions and be honest with yourself. Do you mentally condemn other drivers as incompetent or stupid? Make negative comments about other drivers to those riding with you. Close up space to stop other motorists from merging or changing lanes. Prevent another driver from passing. Tailgate a driver to get them to speed up or get out of your way. Angrily speed past another driver. Run a stop sign red light, or other traffic control device out of frustration or anger. Honk or yell at someone to express your anger or frustration. Make an obscene gesture at another driver. Pursue another vehicle to express your anger. Deliberately bump or ram another vehicle. Exit your vehicle to teach the other driver a lesson through either a verbal exchange or physical confrontation. Fantasize about physically attacking another driver. If you answered yes to these questions, even a couple of these questions, you may be at risk to become an aggressive driver. How do I avoid becoming an aggressive driver? Leave early for any trip. Too frequently, people don't allow enough time to get where they want on time. Play music that you like, but not so loud that you can't hear emergency vehicles. Keep cool. Don't transfer the anger you may feel from other situations into your driving. Let people merge. Even if they've done something stupid, why make their problem your problem? Before we go, I will just ask you to remember this. Millions and millions of people have already passed this driver test, or one just like it. You can pass it too. And listening to one of these podcast episodes every day will give you a huge advantage. So I expect to see you back here for the next episode.